So filmmaker Karim Mott spent the better part of the 90s, I'm told, incarcerated on drug charges, which has been the inspiration behind his work, focusing on the injustices that occur behind bars. He joins me now. Good morning, sir. Welcome to Smile Jamaica. How are you? All right. Uh, happy. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you. Yeah. Um, I hope you are well. Your family are all as well? Yes, everybody's cool. Yeah. Um, Tell me first about your Jamaican connection. Tell me about that before we get into uh, the real reason we're going to have a chat with you this morning. Yes, um, every, my whole family is Jamaican. Father, mother, everybody is Jamaica. I grew up in Jamaica. I was born in America, but I went back to Jamaica at um, one years old. And I stayed there till I was, I lived there and got elementary school and everything there till I was about nine, ten years old and then come to America. Yeah, but you sound like you're still in Jamaica, though, the way you talk. I like that. Do you? You, you don't have an American accent, do you? Well, I can switch it up. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about Karim. Who, who, is, who is Karim? Tell me, and again, before we get to what you're doing now, we already said you're a filmmaker, but tell me a little bit of, about Karim. Um, yes, I'm a filmmaker, uh, uh, a an artist. I'm very creative. That's what I do all the time. I write. Um, Funny, I make enough jokes and everything there, but I do enough writing and enough creating, and I try to even invent products and those type of things. Yeah. And I'm a real family man, you know. Yeah, where did that come from? Where did the, the writing, the filmmaking, where was the fascination with that? Where, where, why did you want to go there? Um, as, a, as a child, since I was a youth, I used to always do a lot of drawing. And then slowly but surely, the drawing kind of turned into writing, and then it turned into wanting to see these images become moving images and wanting to be a filmmaker. So it's like a natural progression throughout the years. Yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time on your incarceration. I already mentioned that. But what did that do for you, re-filmmaking, rewriting? Um, that, that refocused my life, you know, because sometimes your life just going on the wrong edge and you're taking the wrong road. And next thing you know, say you're going off of a cliff and you have to refocus and recharge. And it kind of just made me focus on what I really want in life, you know? Was there a plan B or did you just have a, a kind of tunnel vision thing and say, no, this is what I want to do? Did you say, well, if this don't work, I might try this? Did you just say, no, this is what I want and, and I'm going to veer from this? Yeah, I, just, I said, this is what I want to do because I tried enough other things before and those didn't work. So I said, this is what I'm going to do because I'm, I feel like I'm good at it. And I think I can get better and better at it. So this is what I want to do. This is why I'm going to focus tunnel vision and just go straight. Yeah. Non-stop. Were you taught in any area in filmmaking? Were you taught to, to do you edit yourself? Do you, you know, were you taught in any area of filmmaking? Yeah, actually I wasn't. I, I read books and um, I studied on YouTube. I learned everything on YouTube. I never went to any school in and I, right now I do the writing, the directing, the editing, the casting, the lighting, the audio. I fly the drones. I do everything for my films. And um, I learned everything on YouTube. Where you get the financing from? Well, I finance it myself through my job. And um, through, um, I also design clothes and sell clothes. And I stream other movies on Amazon Prime on YouTube. And I use the financing from those things to help finance the other projects. Okay, I, I read where you've made three short movies, short stories. We don't have time to, to get very specific, but give me an overview of what they're about. I, I said earlier, Injustices Behind Bars. Uh, give me an idea of what they're about. Yeah, one of them was about, um, um, it was kind of a, a horror film. I made it kind of like a spooky film where this guy was running in the woods and then he got bit by a snake and he died but he didn't know he was dead. So the whole movie, you was looking at his spirit without realizing that you was looking at his spirit. And then towards the end, you realize that he actually died in the woods. So it's kind of like a, um, a spooky type of film I made. Yep. And um, yeah. Second one? Yeah, the second one was, the second one was some, um, some young people, some children. And I put a film together with them where they were, um, they were in the school putting a project together. And these are like five and six minute short films. Mm -hmm. And then the other films I made was full feature films. That's an hour and a half and an hour and 45 minutes. And that's, that's the last one you made, right? Yeah, the last one I made is actually a documentary. And that one is um, an hour and 21 minutes. Okay. 
Um, so where, where is that? Where can we see that? Where has it been shown? So, th so this documentary is actually about a prison that I served time in, and it was an old dungeon prison built in 1910, and then shut it down in 2001. So I did a whole documentary on the prison, and um, it's been streaming in the movie theaters up here in um, D.C. and Maryland since February. Yeah. So after I leave the, the theaters, then I will stream it online, but it's not online right now. Yeah. True story? Yeah, true story, yeah. Everything about it. And, and are you the, the character in, 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 in the, the movie? Well, it's not a movie, it's a documentary. Yeah. So I'm the, I'm, na I'm the narrator. Okay. And um, I interview ex-prisoners and ex-prison guards. Okay, what's 100 Films? So 100 Films is my company where I do um, the filmmaking. So, so far I have about uh, six films finished already. And they are streaming on Amazon Prime on YouTube. Yeah. Um, will we see you in Hollywood? Will we see a big movie and I've said that, you know, directed and written by Kareem Morton. I said, I know that gentleman, he's my brother. Um, is, is, is that the hope or, or, or no? Yeah, that is the goal, yes. That is the goal from, from, um, from writing to directing to editing, everything. It's, that is the goal right there in Hollywood. Yeah, man, great to see you. Anyone you want to say hi to in Jamaica before you go? Yeah, of course. My mother is in Jamaica. Hi, hi to my mom, Celia Witter. Uh, Michelle, of course, Michelle, my cousin. I have enough cousins down there. My uncle Michael, my auntie, uh, Uncle Dan, um, Auntie Joan, Dirk, a whole family down there. So I want to big up everybody in Jamaica and, and the rest of my family across across the world in America too. Yeah, and because and my birthday is today, you know? Yeah, I was just gonna say happy birthday, and because I know that you're going to make it, we're related here. I am, a, I am cousin Neville, yeah. <laughs> Cousin Neville. <laughs> All right. Happy birthday, my friend. God bless you. I pray that you live to see so many more, and I pray that you get your wish. And one of these days, I will be sitting in a movie theater watching a, a big-time movie, and it's going to be written and directed, and who knows? Maybe even you will be the star also. God bless. Stay safe. Much love. love. Yep. Writer, writer and director, Karim Moat. That's it for this week's Diaspora Check-In.